The situation here, we have an estimated 10,000 people, West Germans, West Berliners, perhaps East Germans, in front of the Berlin Wall at the Brandenburg Gate. The actual evening of the wall coming down, I lived, uh, I lived in Hamburg and I was watching telly with my mom and suddenly there was this news line going like through the movie and it was like, did you just see that? They're shouting here, the wall is dead, the wall is dead. Not for the 30 years that it stood have so many people crossed so quickly. And the question is, how much longer will it stand? Suddenly the phone starts ringing, people sort of, you know, hey, did you hear, like, the wall is down in Berlin? The reason why my mom wanted to leave Germany was probably because she saw there is no future for me because, you know, I was uh, brought up as like asking questions, you know, never really sort of taking things for what they are. Ask why are they the way they are. We were allowed to leave East Germany just a week before, so my mom lost everything she ever had. There was something that it's called Ausreiseantrag. It's such a stupid thing, there isn't even a translation for it. Basically, you apply to um, the Ministry of Inner Affairs that you want to leave the country and the citizenship. That obviously was forbidden, so you've been on the blacklist right away. Every once a while, which was quite a, a regular once a while, you've been uh, called into the Ministry of Inner Affairs and they questioned you. Uh, they even separ separated my mom and myself from each other during those talks. Offered ridiculous things like, if I stay, they will let her go right away and vice versa. So like really horrible things to a family. It wasn't easy. I had to go all the way up to Rostock, which is a town in the north of Germany and then take a train in the morning to go to Hamburg. We didn't really sort of know what to expect at the border too, you know, maybe they arrest us. Or... So I was, I was pretty scared. When we arrived in, 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 in West Germany, friends of, of my mom, they, they picked us up in, in another town so we didn't actually go all the way to Hamburg. And uh, we drove by car and I remember stopping at a petrol station um, just on the autobahn and there was more in the petrol station than in any sort of supermarket I've ever seen in East Germany. I was just like, I think I didn't speak a word for two, three days because I was totally overwhelmed. It was absolutely for certain the wall's never going to come down and never going to see any of my friends again. So when I said bye, I actually said bye. And it was really strange because two weeks later, you know, when I came back to Berlin after the war went down, it was very difficult to actually find a connection again. This is actually the uh, original Berlin Wall. And, um, you know, basically in uh, 1990, a lot of artists started doing paintings on here. And it's, uh, it's called the East Side Gallery now. If someone from a different country or even a different city can understand this, but this is like, you know, to me, I don't even know, I couldn't even describe my feelings. It's, it's anger, it's the, uh, I don't know, the wish to, that something like this never happens again, of course. Berlin experienced two world wars. One of them obviously completely devastated the infrastructure of the city. And therefore you, you know, there was a lot of space for like new buildings. It's, it's very modern and very old and historic at the same time. And you know, there's a positive tension in that. I think on the architecture side, I think Berlin is something rather special. I think Berlin is one of the greenest cities in the world. And uh, that's one place then, you know, personally for me, the you know, the stables, the horseback riding thing where I can, you know, relax a little and chill out. And of course, when I run with my dogs, uh, basically where I live, I can run from one park into the next park, into the next park. There's always a twist in something. Apparently the reason why I started DJing is because I was so bored with the music in the clubs in Berlin, because it was just really one dimensional. 
And so I went to record stores, I bought some records and made tapes for myself and some friends. And one of my friends actually passed the tape on to a promoter. This is how I got my first gig. And then I knew, okay, this is what I want to do. Every single gig is still a challenge. It's still something where I put all my effort into. And uh, the most important thing is always the next gig. I think your career ends when you start thinking, I've made it. You know, the Berlin is kind of like hold together and stick together. And, uh, and that's something very special, something you probably only experience in Berlin. So this is a little bit of my city, Berlin. If you want to show us some of your city, go to the CNN website.